Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Assalatu wassalamu wa bi abar musallin. Allahumma salli ala sayidina Muhammad fatil maqlik wal qatl ma sabak. Na sallu alhaq bi haq wa hadil siratal mustaqim wa ala alihi aqdaril azim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh everyone. May peace be upon you wherever you are in the remaining days of Ramadan. Uh, we pray that you are in good health, well-being and good state of mind. May we share the blessing together on this blessed night of Lailatul Qadar. So tonight uh, is a continuation of uh, with Imam Abdullah Ndaw on the Tafsir Quran by Sheikh Ibrahim Nias and tonight he will share with us Surah to Ikhlas inshallah. So we, uh, before we begin I just like to remind all of you uh, for those who are viewing you can send your question to Imam to me at 9068706. So inshallah we hope and pray that we can benefit together with this dars uh, with Imam on this dars inshallah. Without further ado, we start now, insyaAllah. Tafadhal Imam. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mursalin Sayyidi al-Anbiyahi wa Imam al-Mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin al-Fatihi lima ugliqa wa al-Khatimi lima sabaq. Nasir al-Haqq bil-Haqq wal-Hadi ila suratika al-Mustaqim. وعلى آله حق قدره ومقدار العظيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ورضي الله عن أصحاب الشيخ يا أهمة الشيخ دير لنا في هذا المحبر وتعتف لنا بالنذر تأتي لنا بظفر أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Beloved brothers and sisters wherever you are here we meet again in another blessed day of the last 10 days of Ramadan. The night of which you are in Singapore is expected to be Laylatul Qadr. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it for us and accept all of our fast during the month of Ramadan, accept all of our nightly prayers, daily charities, and recitation of the Quran and make it make us amongst those who will come out of this month of Ramadan forgiven and utaqa and freed from hell. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala lahu fi laylatin utaqa wa dhalika fi kulli laylin aw kama qad. He indeed has freed people or people that are freed from hell every night. And he said that is every night of the night of Ramadan. So we ask that it will be amongst those. And we ask him that he allow, allow us, bless us to finish the month of Ramadan, fasting it with good health. We ask him that this not be our last Ramadan. We ask him that he protects us from this coronavirus, heal those who are sickened from this disease, and grant Jannah to those who have died from this disease. We thank him for all of these opportunities that he bestowed upon us. And we thank those who afford us this opportunity to share the teachings of, of our beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim Abdullah Nyes Al Kaulahi Al Tijani. Our beloved Sheikh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate him, his maqam and grant him highest Jannah. We are to share with you today, as we've done in the past, some of his writing, some of his writings of his tafsir, uh, uh, including his tafsir. The tafsir that is used is the Riyadu, the Riyadi tafsir, the book that he had, a six volume that he translated the Quran in. And today we will share Surah Al-Ikhlas, which is a great surah in his eyes. That's why he started the, the tafsir and he said, it's Makkiyah. The surah was revealed in Makkah. And it's Arba Ayat. It's only four Ayat, four verses, the whole surah. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakun lahu kufu an ahad. Those are the, the verses of the surah. He started the tafsir with takbirat. 
You see, whenever you, a Muslim comes across something glorious, something or hears, whether he, he hears it, he witnesses or comes across it, that is grandiose. They go takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. When a victory comes for the Muslims, they say Allahu Akbar, God is the greatest, God is the greatest. He comes across this surah and he starts it, opening it by saying Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. God is greatest. There is no God but Allah. God is the greatest and all praise is due to Allah. He started the surah with this. And then we wonder why. We wonder why does he open the surah, the tafsir of the surah with this before he even say anything. He glorifies Allah. He, he, he glorifies Allah and testifies that there is none one but him. He says he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all that he bestowed upon us. Yes, because of the content of the surah. God is the greatest in all of his sifat, all of his qualities that is to be described. There is none but him from all that he will be described. And we praise him and thank him for the opportunity to have the understanding and the gift of the surah, of surah al-ikhlas. Yes, it is a gift. He started by saying, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, ahad. And he starts. And he said, Qabla an natakallam fi tafsiri hadhi surah, before we start even in translating or explaining the surah, we will introduce few chapters. And he said, the first one, awal fi fada ili hadi surah. Let's talk about the benefits of the surah. The benefits or the favors that this surah can give one. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-ikhlasu tu'addilu sulut al-Qur'an. Ta'addilu sulut al-Qur'an. Al-Ikhlas, Ta'adilu Thulut Al-Qur'an. Surah Al-Ikhlas equals the third of the Qur'an. Man qara al-Ikhlas thalatha marra. Thalatha marra tin faka annama khatam al-Qur'an. Whosoever reads Surah Al-Ikhlas three times as if he had read the whole entire Qur'an. Wa wajiha dhalika ala anna al-Qur'an jaa li ma'rifati Allahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Reason being, the Qur'an came to define for us to know who Allah is. Quran is to tell, tell us who Allah is. Knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his actions, in his attribute, and in himself. We need to know him in these three hadarat or these three positions or stations. The station of himself, of his mahiyah, of his, uh, the station of his actions and that of his attributes and Allah said Qul huwa Allah wa ahad so Ibrahim said tadammanat min ma'rifati dhati this one encompasses knowing Allah in his self knowing him in himself ma'lam tatadamman suratun ghayraha none of the surahs in the Quran contains the knowledge of Allah in his self more than or as much as Surah Al-Ikhlas contains. And in that, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these three stations, as I mentioned, the station of his self, the station of his actions, and that of his attributes. Now, because we talked about, Quran comes in to tell you who Allah is. Surah Al-Ikhlas comes to tell you this sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes in to tell you in himself. You see, in the Surah Al-Ikhlas, he doesn't tell you anything about those other three hadrats, which is his attributes and, and his, his actions. Surah Al-Ikhlas doesn't talk about it. He talks about Allah himself, his mahiyya, his lordship and his ID. As one of the scholars said, a Surah Al-Ikhlas is an ID. Your ID card contains your name, your birth date, your, your place of birth, your address, and, and your parents and whatnot, just to identify who you are. So that is to talk about your existence, yourself. So that Ikhlas talks about one of these three stations, and that is the self of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it's equal to one third of the Quran, if the Quran is of the three parts. وَكَانَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَاقِفًا مَعَ جِبِيلٍ فَأَقَبَلَ أَبُو ذَا he said one time, the Prophet ﷺ was standing with Jibreel 
and there comes Abu Dhar. And then Abu Dhar, uh, and then Jibril said to, to, to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, here comes Abu Dhar. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you know who Abu Dhar is? And Jibril said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wow, who are endana min endana, ashharu, ashharu minu andan, and, and, andakum, who are endana, ashharu andakum. He is more known to us as the angels than he is known to you as believers. We know Abu Dhar more than you guys know him. And the Prophet said, how does he attain that? What make him attain that level? And Jibril said, because he is not a big man. And as much as, and as much as, as he reads, because he reads a lot, even though he's a small person, he reads Surah Al-Ikhlas a lot. And then he goes to tell us another story. So that is one of, another thing that gives one the importance of Surah Al-Ikhlas, that the angels knows you. The second one, another person, a man was reading the people in, uh, in Salat, Masjid al in Medina. He would lead the people and every time he makes Salat, he would start with Surah Al-Ikhlas. And then he will follow with another Surah. And then the people, came and, and to him and asked him, you need to stop this. Either you read Surah Al-Ikhlas and carry on, or you read another Surah and carry on. But, you know, quit reading Surah Al-Ikhlas and another Surah, Surah Al-Ikhlas and another Surah. In every raka, you, he, he does that. Whenever he's reading a Surah, before it, he will open it with Ikhlas and goes on. And the man told him, well, if you don't like that, find another Imam. Find another imam because this is what I will do. I will not stop doing that. They came and complained to the Prophet وسلم, about this, this gentleman. And the Prophet asked the, pro the person, Walima Dalik, why are you doing that? And the man said, just because I love it. I love ikhlas. I love Surat al-Ikhlas. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Habbaka iyahu, hubbuka jannah Your love of this surah is what makes you into Jannah. Your love of the surah will make you into Jannah. So loving Surah Al-Ikhlas can make us into Jannah. So that is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Wa kan fi tabuqa waqa'a aymun fasa'ala Jibreel ma hadha wa qala li kathrati al-malaikati ladhi yanziluna li salatin ala janazati mu'awiyah. He said, there was, during the, the battle of, 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 uh, of Tabuk, there was a, a, a darkness coming, like as if the, the, the clouds were coming down because of the, the numerous numbers of, of angels that were coming down. There were so many angels coming down to pray on the janazah of Muawiyah ibn Muawiyah. He died in the battle of Tabuk. The angels were coming down as many. And the Prophet وسلم, asked Jibreel, what is this? And he told him there was the angels that were coming down. And he asked him why? He said, because because he used to read a lot. That's why on his janazah, come down all of these angels to pray on him. He goes on that the Prophet said, whosoever goes to bed and lays on his right side and he reads Surah Al-Ikhlas a hundred times, if he dies, Yunada, Yunadi Munadin Sir Yaminak Jannah. When he la when he dies, laying on his right side, when he dies, because when you die, you'll be put on your right side. The angels would come and tell you to rest on your right until you enter Jannah. So reading Surah Al Ikhlas before you go to bed, laying on your bed, and you read Surah Al Ikhlas a hundred times and lay on your right side. When you die, the angels would come and give you the glad tidings that rest until you go to Jannah, meaning it, it will be, it'll allow you to enter Jannah. He also said, If you read it 50 times, Allah will forgive you the sins of 50 years. Whoever reads it 10 times, Allah will build for you a castle in Jannah. If you read it 20, he'll build for you two castles. He, if you read it three times, he, 30 times, he will build you three castles in Jannah. And Omar said to the Prophet, 
then there would be too many castles in Jannah. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allahu awsa'u min dhalik. Allah is more vast than that. But his Jannah is bigger than that. You're talking about three castles, three castles is nothing to the castles of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walihada wala asma'un kathira. For that, Surah Al-Ikhlas has many names. Some would go up to 20 names. And having so many names means that something is very honorable. That's why they gave it all of these names because of its, its, its value. The value of Surah Al-Ikhlas makes it has all these many names. Min Asma Al-Ikhlas, Min Asma Al-Ikhlas. One of its names is Al-Ikhlas, Al-Tafrid, Al-Tajrid, Al-Tawheed, Al-Najat. Why? It's called a najat for whoever reads for the Surah Al-Ikhlas, who reads it like we said, we said earlier, whoever reads Surah Al-Ikhlas many times, Allah would save him, glory be to him, from the punishment of a fire. When Nisba, Lima Warada fi Sababin al Nuzulu Kalu. And Sabal Insiblana, it calls a Nasab, a Nasab. Why it is called a nasab? Because it was at some point the kuffar of, of Quraysh told the Prophet, وسلم, give us the nasab, the, the lineage of, of your God. Give us the lineage of your God. And it is called also al wilaya. For whoever reads it, whoever keeps reading Quran, Surah Al Ikhlas. Reading it often makes you wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is called al-ma'rifa. It's called al-ma'rifa because man arafaha kana arifan billah. Whoever knows the, the real meaning of Surah Al-Ikhlas becomes arif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal-jamal is called al-jamal. Fahiyya jamalullahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. It is the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's called al-jamal. It's called al-beauty. Because it is the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. It is called a nur. Ay al mar'iya. Aw awil al mubri'a. A nur. Mushakaka aw al mubra. Aw al mubra'a. Mina shirk. Mubri'a tun mina shirk. One that frees you from shirk or from association of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you read it, it will free you. If you read it and understand the concept of it, then you will be free of a shirk because you would know who Allah is to have any associates with him. It is called al-mu'awwidha, the protector. When you say the mu'awwidha, the salat that you read, the three surahs that you read for the ta'awid or for protection. That's why it's called al-mu'awwidha, the one that protects one. Wasura. الأساس لأنها الأسسة السماوات والسبع والأراضي السبع على قل هو الله أحد. It is called the base or the foundation because from it it was built the heavens and the earth. Seven heavens and the seven earths. على قل هو الله أحد. And it is called أو أو it is called it's also called الأساس because it is the base of of this religion. The base of, your, of this religion is a tawheed, a tawheed or divinity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is all encompassed in this surah. Which is called also al mahbar the present, because whoever reads Surah Al Ikhlas a lot, the angels would come to him. Al Muhdir, the one that brings, the one that brings or witness, brings witnesses. Because when you read it, the angels would come. Al Muhdir, Hadar al Malaika. The malaika would come. Well, mudakira, it is called the reminder because it reminds the reader of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is called the samad, it is called al bara'a, it is called al nur. All of these are its name and some other names. This surah was revealed when the Prophet was asked. The Quraysh came to him and they told him, Oh Muhammad, 
You have broken our families. You've broken our rankings, our groupings. You've broken us. You've divided us. You've cursed our lords, our gods. You've called us crazies. You've, you've, you've insulted our, our thinking, our, our intellect. Now, if you want money, we will give you money. If you want a wife, we will make you marry any woman that you choose. If you're sick, we will heal you. We will go and take you to the doctors and get you treated. If you want to be a leader, we will make you the king of our town. You be the leader. So you stop all these things that you're doing. And the Prophet ﷺ responded, let's to be majnoon. I'm not crazy and I don't want your money. I don't want your women and I don't want to be any of your leader. But innama ana rasulullah. I am a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I call you ila ibadatillahi wahdahu. I come to call you to worship Allah alone. And they said, we have, we have 360 idols. And we ask them to take care of all of our affairs. And still, we still have some things that are not taken care of. 360 gods or goddess that we ask for all of our affairs and some of our affairs are still not taken care of how do you expect us that we turn into one god that he can take care of all of our affairs if 360 cannot take care of it how do you think that your one god can take care of all of our needs is your god made of gold is your god made of iron or made of silver or what is he made of because all they know they, the idols that they carved and put them up is made of whatever they made them of. Some were even making idols from date. When they're traveling, they take from the dates of Makkah and they carve it into a shape of a, a little idol, a little statuette. If they want to do something on their path, they would pray onto it. And then afterwards, if they're hungry, they would eat it. There are, a quick story here. In Umar ibn al-Khattab, when he was uh, the Khalifa, one day he was sitting and he started crying crying profusely uh, and, uh, and all of a sudden he stopped and he started laughing, laughing strongly. And one of the, the companion asked him, what's up with me, what's going on, Amirul Mu'minin? One moment you're laughing, the next you're crying. So what's going on? What's the story? He said, I remember when I was in, a, in, a, in the ignorance, al Jahiliya, I was burying my daughter and I was in the middle of the desert as I was digging dust was over my beard and she wiped my beard off that dust and still I buried her. So that what made him cry. And what made him laugh, he said, I was traveling one day when I left Mecca and I carved an idol, a little goddess from dates, the dates of Mecca. And I was traveling, I worshiped it. And then when I got, when I got hungry, I ate the God. He said, <laughs> that was the funny part that I have to eat. One has to eat his own God. And the Prophet Sallallahu responded. When they asked him, then tell us what your God is. What is he made of? And then Allah revealed this. Revealed in, in, in Quran, Laysa ka mithlihi shay. There is nothing of liking to him. Not in Surah Al-Ikhlas. Laysa ka mithlihi shay. And then he revealed another one, another verse. Wa ilahukum ilahun wahid. La ilaha illahu wa rahmanu rahim. Your Lord, your God is one. There is none of liking to him. Who is the merciful here and the hereafter. And then he comes now into defining who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. As they ask him, Allah said, after revealing those verses, he said, comes now to tell them to give the definition. Sifulana, in Sifulana, give us his, his, his lineage. Tell us who he is. Allah comes to tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, ya Muhammad. Say, tell them. And he said, Shaykh said, fi awwal surah li na'rif anna al-Quran jaha kada. We saw that we know in the beginning, in the Quran, it came like this. For you it comes to tell us It's nothing that the Prophet would take something out or add on something. No, as it comes, he will read it to them. So instead of telling them, Allah had allowed someone, no, he comes in as Allah said it to him. Qul. He's telling them, Qul. but that's what Allah told him to say. So this is what he, how it comes. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi never adds, never decreases anything. That's why al-qul, kalimatu qul, in qila lahu qul huwa Allah wa ahad, yaqra'u kama nadara alayhi. 
when it is told to him, say, Allah Ahad, he just reads it to him as it was read to them. When you look at Qul Ya Kafiruna, there is in the beginning of it, Qul. Qul huwa Allah Ahad, there is in the beginning of it, Qul. And Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falak, as well as Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas. Each and every one of them is started with the word Qul. But when it comes to the word, to Surah Al Lahab, when Allah was cursing Abu Lahab, he didn't tell him, Qul Ya Muhammad. He came in because that would end up Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the one that is cursing Abu Lahab. He comes in and tell him, Tabbat Yada. Allah himself come and curse him. If Muhammad was to say, Qul, Tabqul, Tabbat Yada, say Muhammad, Tabbat Yada, then it would have been as if Muhammad is the one that is disrespecting Abu Lahab and is his uncle. And Allah is giving us this distinct distinction. Rashid Ibrahim is explaining it this way, that Allah is just out of respect. He did not give Muhammad the word to say, say Ya Muhammad. But Allah himself said it without any intermediation. In the Atay Kawthar, when it came, when the people came and, and then talked to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he was the one that has no lineage. You see, Atay Nakal Kawthar came when every time he has a son, the boys would die. And they come in to call him Al-Abtar. In, in the Arabia, Arabia, when you don't have sons, you are called the cutoff because there's no one that would carry your name. You see, everyone comes in to become the son of. So I'm, I'm known as Abdullah now because that's my father's last name. My wife would end up being carrying my last name. My daughters would carry their husband's last name. So if you don't have a son, your lineage is cut off. So it's called al abtar Allah didn't come in to say, tell them, but no, it is Allah who came directly and say, inna afina kal kawthar, the same thing with Izajah and Nasrullah. Qul li anna thuratul kawthar tukalla. Takallamu fi janadi, as I said earlier, when Allah came in to respond to himself. Inna afina kal kawthar. Fa salli li rabbika wanha inna shani akuwa la abutar. La yarid ala nafsi, la yarud ala nafsi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never respond for himself. When anything happened, he never respond for himself. When they call him to worship anything other than Allah, in qul ya ayyuhal kafirun, because it was a moment when they came in and asked the Prophet وسلم, would you worship our lords for a few days? Then we will worship yours for a few days. For a few months and you worship for a few months. Allah, Muhammad وسلم, didn't tell them what he was going to do. Allah is the one who tell him what to tell them. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدُ I'm not going to worship what you're going. Tell them. Tell them, Muhammad, that I will not worship what you worship and you will not worship what I worship. So you can see here is the, com the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is ex executing. And in Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab, as you say, Abu Lahab was the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah gave him the honor, al-istihya wa al-haqq tabaraka wa ta'ala ala an ya'mura Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an yasubba ammahu. Allah gave him the honor not to order him to curse his uncle, but he came in and cursed him himself without requesting for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say that. Even Musa alayhi salam, he gave an, an example, Shabram goes and to, to give an example. Even Musa, who was adopted by Fir'aun, was not even his father, his biological father. He wasn't related to him. He just adopted him. He came to, told him, to tell him that to talk to him with kindness. Go and speak to him with kind words. And that was not even his father. Then it will not be fitted for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell the Prophet وسلم, to curse his uncle. وَتَكَلَّمَ الْحَقِّ وَأَيْدًا هُوَ تَكَلَّمَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فَقَالَ تَبَّنْ لَكَ تَبَّنْ لَكَ أَلِي هَذَا دَعَوْتَنَا Yes, because Abu Lahab came to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he was in the beginning of the da'wah, when he was calling the people in the da'wah, in, in Al-Islam, he came to curse Muhammad وسلم, tell him, woe to you, is this what you call us for? Allah responded for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to tell him, Tabbat yada abi lahabin watab. When Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, Qulhu wallahu ahad, takallamu fi janib al-haq. Now they talk about the rights of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Nasabu ilayhi waladin. They have associated with him to have a child. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala comes in to respond in the rights of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Huwa anna luhu la walada illahu. He has no child. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamas nasabuhu ilayhi waladan. He denies that annahum nasabu ilayhi ilahan. He comes to deny that they, uh, they found a child for him. They made Allah to have a child. Fal insan naqashun bi fuqadanihi walad. If you have a child and the child dies, you become, you've lost something. Something has gone from you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not befitting, which is perfection. It is not befitting to lose anything. So it is not befitting for him to have a child that could die at some point for him to lose something. He is well, rich is enough. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ghaniyun bi dhatihi wa baqin ila al-abad. He is most complete, most perfect. And he is the one that is everlasting until the ila abadil abadil abad until the day of judgment, until the end of time. He will never decrease anything of his deity or of his kingdom. We he goes on. We get proud for having children, or we get proud for anything. Everything that we have, we are proud of it. I'm proud of my cell phone. I'm proud of my my tablet, I'm proud of my books, my house, my car. You get proud, you get to be proud of what we own, what we pass, what we possess. And we also want our children to be part of what we have. We want our children to be part of what we have. We want our children to carry on the torch when we die. When we die, we want to leave children behind us and they carry on the torch. That's what a human being wants from a child. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yahtaju ila man yu'inu wala yamutun maluhu wala li walad. And he never needs any child to carry on. He's never, he's never going to die. He's everlasting. So he will never need a child to carry on the torch for him after he leaves. Having a child and becomes naqsun, becomes uh, becomes in, imperfection for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when he loses a child, as a human being loses a child, becomes uh, un, un, unperfect that he is missing something. When they cursed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi telling him because he didn't have a child, as I said earlier in Na'afin Akal Kawsara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded for them that he is not. But in this time, and يرد عن الحق الله responded for himself and said قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد he denies Allah having child nor begotten he was didn't get nor he was begotten ya Muhammad and Allah comes to tell Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم قل say Muhammad هو meaning هو is a dhamir is an article that points out to Allah هو meaning he هو الله اسم الجلال هو points to Allah is an article of definition that points to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to what's coming. Qul huwa Allah. Allah is the ismul jalala, the name of Allah, the almighty. Ahadun is that that's what who Allah is. Qul huwa Allah, ahadun, the only one. Now, he goes on to talk about the phrase, Qul huwa Allah, ahad. Ahadun mubalara fil wahid. When you say ahad, is your glorification of al-wahid. You say one, the one, or the only. Ahadun is the only. Wahid is the one. Ahadun is the only. Ahadun laysa wahid faqad. Ahad is not one. Ahad is the only one. Fal Arab yaquluna, fulanun la yuqawimuhu wahidun. When they said one, this guy cannot be challenged. The Arab will say cannot be challenged by one. What it meant by, is two or three people cannot challenge him. But when they say, La yuqawimu ahad. See, la yuqawimu ahad meaning when no one can challenge this person. So if you say Khalid is strong enough that one cannot challenge him. Meaning if you bring two people or three people or four people, Khalid still can dominate them. But if you say Khalid, can no one can challenge Khalid? Meaning, if you bring everyone in this planet, they will not be able to challenge Khalid. So that's why Allahu Ahad is that super relative description of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. فبهذا العرب لا يستعملون إذا سبقت نفيا إلا إلا هنا 
أتى من غير سبقه نفى لأن الإثبات قوي here there is no denying there is no denying لا أحد but he say Allah أحد there is no need to deny but when you say Allah أحد that means none is of liking to him سبحانه وتعالى فذكر هو Allah سبحانه وتعالى كما نسي هو Allah وذكر أحد he said Allah and then أحد يشير إلى مقامات ثلاثة there, now when you say قل هو الله أحد comes to define to define three different stations there are those whom they know from each one of them they have a station that they will know when you speak to them المقام الأول والأصحاب اليمين the people of right هو مقام المقربين the first three the three levels المقربين those who are near Allah I call, they know their level is huwa. When you tell them huwa, they know what does it mean, to whom it is referred to. So those are called al-maqarrabin. Ashabu al-yameen, those of the right, they know when you say Allah, they know who Allah is. They, they don't, they haven't reached the level of maqarrabin, but they are at the level of people of al-yameen. Wa maqamu ashabu shimal those of the left, they will not know al-arifun al-maqarrabun, مقرب عند الله تبارك وتعالى لا يغيب الله عن قلوب عن قلوبهم لحظة فيتذكرون دائما فإذا قيلوا so now it comes in هو as the مقام of the alpha العارفي they know those who هو when they said هو these people know that Allah هو refers to only Allah Allah never leaves their mind it never leaves their thoughts and if you say هو they know that Allah is the one that whom you refer to and that you will find them even when they have a dhikr they will say huwa 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 referring to huwa Allah huwa is Allah so that is the highest maqam that one is looking for wa ba'dum yuqalu lahum wa yuqalu innahu huwa ismul ismul a'dam and this is some time it is called huwa is the great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is maqam al-muqarrabin this is the maqam of al-muqarrabin the closest one to Allah those who know Allah best are the mak are in the maqam of huwa. Wallahu maqam ashabu al-yamin, as I said earlier, huwa maratibu al-umum. In general population, they know who Allah is. Those are the one, the people of yamin. General population know when you say Allah, they know that it refers to no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ya'alamun al-ladhina, la ya'alamun al-haq tabarak wa ta'ala al-haqiqat ma'rifa yata'yuna li an yuqalu huwa Allahu. Those who do not know really who Allah is, those who do not know the ma'rifa, they need to be told when you say huwa, Allah. When I say huwa, I mean Allah. But when they know, when you mentioned, when you tell them huwa Allah, tadhakkaru, now they will remember, oh, now you mean Allah. Amma ashabu shimal, those of the left, they were the one that denies it. When you tell them huwa Allah, they would start wondering, okay, he is God, but which God? The God that we're talking about, it is the Lat or the Uzzat or the which one? And they need now to be told, Oh Allah, Ahad, He is God, the only one. So this gives you the three maqamats of, of, of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The maqam al the maqam al ashab al yamin and the maqam ashab al shimal Those who know Allah, Muqarrabin, the closest, needs only to be told, Huwa, and they know who Allah is, as Allah, Huwa could be one of the great names of Allah. <laughs> قل هو الله أحد قل يا محمد وهو محمد say to them that Allah سبحانه وتعالى is the only one لا شريك له he has no associate or no partner في ذاته not in himself وصفاته nor in his attributes وأسمائه nor in his names وأفعاله or his actions he is the only one he said the Jews would say you are one هو أحد وَأَنْتَ أَحَدٌ وَأَنَا أَحَدٌ You see, they will tell you that you are one, and I am one, and you are one. So Allah is one. He said, Shaykh Ibrahim explains here, he said, no, you are not one. I am not one. And he is not one. Because you are made from the sperm of your parents, of your father, and that of your mother, of your mother. So you are made from those two. You are made to come to witness a laylu wa nahar night and day. You are made to come and eat and drink. You are made to sleep and wake up. You are made to live and die. You are made to write things, many, many things. So you are not one. You are not one. 
you are of multiple things. Allah Tabaraka wa Taala, who will munfarid bil uhudiya. Allah is the only one that is in His divinity, and it is only one that has no associate in anything, because He doesn't need a night or a day, eat or sleep, made of nothing but Himself. He is the one that made everything. La tusaf biha. He is not to be described with anything. Illa hadratum Allah Tabaraka wa Taala, except in the station of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Qul hu Allah wahad. Tell them who Allah and He is the only one. Karrara now. He Allah repeats the word al ismul janala. Qul hu Allah ahad. Allahu sama. Now he comes in to tell us now. Al huwa huwa maqsud fi jamil hawaj. Al samad. Qul hu Allah ahad. We talked about Qul hu Allah ahad. Allahu as a repetition of the the name of Allah. Al samad. The one that is absolute. The one that we depend onto. That we turn onto all of our needs. Arrafa arrafa samad. You see, the article of definition, the, is the one that is used in a samad, the only one or the absolute. And when he said a samad, but he said ahad, he did not say the one, because everybody knows who's the one, who's the only one. But a samad, the only one that we depend on is to be defined so people know a samadu is the only one is to be needed the only one that we depend on that needs nobody because if you tell them everybody knows who Allah is that's why it isn't ahadun is if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth even though they disbelieve us they will tell you Allah al mushrikun they will tell you Allah wal kuffar they will tell you Allah ittafaqu ala wujudillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala they all agreed even those who are atheists can agree that yes, there is a higher power, and that higher power is they, they call it the higher power, and we will tell them the higher power is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Wa anhu al maqsud fi jamil hawaij fasara ma'arufan. But al asamad that Allah is the only one that we need for everything that we desire. So He becomes now requires the the only one, the dependable or the the, the dependent. That means. Who is the dependent? He is the only one that we can turn onto. Everyone else, you cannot depend on them into everything except the only one. When you say asamad, wa ma kaun ahad fali hada mahalul kufr fali hada nakira ahad. Now ahadun it doesn't require to have the ahadun or al ahadu. Wa yati samadu ma'arafan qulu Allahu ahadun Allahu samad. Then comes now say he is Allah. And he is the only one, Allah, and he is the one that is dependable or dependent on. Hada you use walakin ahadun samad doesn't is not. We cannot say Arabs. They would say ahadun samad. If we say ahadun samad, they say hada fi lugal Arabi la use. We cannot say that aja ahadun munakiran was samadu maharrafan. Then ahadun comes without the article of definition, and then the samad comes with the article of definition. And it comes in between them, Allah. So it can be understood as a phrases in Arabic: Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Wallahu Tabaraka wa Taala. Hayth anu Ahad, wa huwa Samad. He's the only one, and he's the only one that we depend on. Now comes into the next part: Lam yalid, wa lam yulad. Allah has never begotten. He doesn't have a child. He has no child, and he has none. He has no parents. He said he mentioned here. He said, "Lam yalid, walam yulad," because you have to be born first to give birth. You have to be born to give birth. So Allah was in his studies here. He was not. He didn't get nor begot. But he, no one is said about Allah of his of him denying uh, of his giving birth in the future. He comes and denies lam yalid, walam yulad. He denies. Him giving birth or uh, fathering anybody or begotten anybody, nor was he begotten. None had given him birth unto him. There's a lot, a lot to say about that, but for the for the sake of time, we will skip and summarize it. Mm. And they also said, well, if he did not get it, tahada waladan, then he he had adopted a child. Allah had adopted the child. Now he was not gotten, nor he begotten, 
And then he said he was not taking anybody as a child because, and he said that in another ayah, Lam he did not take anybody as a child of his. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not been, was not born, did not give birth to anybody and did not take anyone as an adopted child. Everything and everyone are the slaves creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lam yalid wa lam yulad tabaraka. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala laysa luhu walad wa laysa luhu walid. He is not, doesn't have a child, nor does he have a parent. Ud'u, ad'u fil maadi lahu waladan fanafal walad. They claim for him a child in the past. And he denied it. Walam yadawlo waladun fil mustaqbal. But no one said Allah would have a child in the future. Walam yahtajli an yunfi waladun mustaqbal. So it does, it's, there is no need in the surah to, for Allah to say that he will not have a child. No, he say he did not have a child, nor did he have a parent. And never mentioned that he will not have a child in the future because no one had claimed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have a child in the future. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدْ And there is none of liking, liking to him. He said, Allah الذي, Allah الذي, هذه صفات, لا يجد إله ثاني يتصفو بهذه صفات. Allah that we've described with all of these qualities, there is no other deity that has these qualities that can be described as Allah. مُمَاثِلًا لَهُ Descriptions or qualities that are of liking to that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَدَ أَنَّ مَعْرِفَةُ هَذِي سُورَةً it is also mentioned that knowing this surah, knowing this surah, and well knowing this surah is the Jannah of the present. If you know this surah well, you are living in Jannah. Why? Al insanu is a ma'na qul huwa Allahu ahad. When one knows the real meaning of qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu ladhi, the real meaning of qul huwa Allahu ahad, fadakhala fil Jannah til hal, li anna al Jannah. And yajid al-insan ma yuwafiqa shahwatuhu wa aqluhu. When you know the real meaning of qul huwa Allahu ahad, then you're into Jannah. For Jannah is when you're in Jannah, living in Jannah means you have something that matches your desire. Your desire, you desire it and it fits your mind. You think about it and you love it. Something your mind wants it and it, and it comes to you. Let's think about an example. You like, you, you, you have your desire to own something, a nice home. And when you look at it, your mind accepts it and you love it and you're enjoying it. So it's something that you have desire for. And it is the concept when you see, you see it, it is something that you love. So the two comes together. But if, even if you like a house, you want to have a house, you see a house, but you, your mind is not wrapped around it. You don't like the house, it is still, not the house that you want. You are not going to enjoy it even if you live in it. If it is a house, if it is a car, if it is a spouse, you just want to get married. And then you are married to a lady or a husband and it is just a person, but not the person that you desired. But yes, it is this opposite sex that you wanted. Your mind wanted the opposite sex, but your, your desire is not this person. You're not going to be that happy of a person. But if the two comes together, all that you were looking in the person in this person and it, and, your mind, and, and it happened to be the, the opposite gender that you wanted. So the two comes together, your shahwa and your aql, your mind and your desire comes together, then it becomes loving thing, and then it becomes a marriage that is made in heaven. Mm -hmm. It says, In this, there is your mind, there is your intellect included, and your desire is included in it. Aqlun, lahu matlab, your mind has a desire and your, 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 your intellect has a desire and your nafs has a desire. When the two comes together, it becomes one is living into Jannah. You're living now into Jannah. Now he goes on to describe it. Your, your nafs desires wealth. Your intellect want a trustworthy somewhere you want to interest everything that you own that's your intellect to want you want to invest you want to find an investment that you can put your mind your money into it and know that it will be safe 
That's your intellect thinking. But your desire, your nafs wants somewhere, someone rich that whatever I want, I can get it from him. Your desire wants a woman that can cook, that every time you want food, she will cook for you. Your desire wants a husband that can provide you. Every time you want provision, he will give it to you. But your mind wants somebody that you can trust, somebody that you every secret that you have, you can tell your spouse. Then if it is someone who can cook for a man, that these are your needs. You want food, you want somebody to help you with all these other stuff that you may need. And it is in this woman that in your nafs would desire that woman. Your nafs wanted this beauty that you wanted in this woman. It is in this woman. Then your nafs would be comfortable with it. And your intellect comes out to find out this woman, it is a trustworthy. This woman is someone you can turn into when you have issues. She will console you. She will advise you. She will have your back. Then your mind and your, your desire come together in liking this woman. Then when you have this woman, you are living in an eternal heaven. The same thing with the husband. The husband that whom you can depend on whenever you need something, he will buy. Whenever you need something fixed in the house, he will fix it himself or to get somebody else to fix it. The husband that you can ask anything and he will make sure that you attain that desire of yours. The husband now that has all of the qualities, the stronger man, the handsome man, that, 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 it is in this person. If you marry that person, you are living in an eternal heaven. So that's why I say when the mind and the desire, the intellect and the desire comes together, it becomes one living into that heaven. So that's why he says, now he goes on to tell, to tell us about قُلْ هُوَ لَا وَعَدْ وَمَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ وَمَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ إِذَا عَرَفْتَ Allah tujidu aminan. If you know Allah, if you know Allah himself real well, you find that Allah is a dependable, is a trustworthy. You can trust him. كُلَّمَا أَوْدَعْتَ عِنْدُهُ تَجِدُهُ مَحْفُوظًا Everything that you entrusted into Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will keep it for you until the day of judgment. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلِنَسِي Whatever you do good is for, you, for yourself. مَنْ عَمِلَ مَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِفْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِفْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا شَرًّا يَرَهُ شَرًّا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِفْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِفْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ If you do an atom of good, you will find it. If you do an atom of bad, you will find it. So he is the trustworthy that everything that you do, it will be entrusted with him. And it will never be lost. What you do, Ghaniyan, إلى الأبد. What you do, Ghaniyan, كل ما تحتاج وتسأله ويعطيك. Now, if you know him real well, you will find him rich enough that everything that you ask him, he will give it to you. You have no worries. If I want something, just ask Allah. إذن ما نعرف الله وجده وجد مرعده. If you know Allah, if you have a good arif, then you you attain everything that you wanted. وهنالك شكون. أو تردد في النفس هل هناك هل هنالك إله آخر يتصل بهذه الصفات is there any doubt is there any hesitation is there any deity that has all any of this quality any of this صفات none does have this صفات فنفى وجود إله يتصل بهذه الصفات denied any deity that has these attributes or these qualities فعلمت أن هذا الواحد الذي هو الأمين then when you know this when you know this real well, you know this one is the one that is most trusted, the one that when you entrusted with Hasanat, with your good deed, he will repay you on the day of judgment. And he is the one that is more rich, is the richest, has everything that you need, as he told us in Hadith al Qudsi. If a human beings and the jinn were to come to me, ask me of everything that they want, and I give them everything that they want, it will not take from my wealth, from my treasures, as if you take a needle and dip it in the ocean. So he is a ghani, he is well rich of everything that we need if we ask them. All of our desires, and he will give it to us. He is that one. He is the only one that has these qualities. There is no one who knows who has these qualities. So if you have that, if you have this understanding of you have that desire of your, you have that tranquility of your mind and you have the desire of your nafs, then you are living in Jannah of this universe. It will not be taken away from you. 
ما دام في هذه he will have no complaints he will have no complaints as long as he is living in this jannah ila jannatul mustaqbal having the understanding of qul huwa la wahad in your heart makes you live in the jannah of this dunya waiting to leave the jannah of al akhirah this is what she ibrahim said may allah reward him for us in this tafsir and may allah make us among those who understand the value of surah al ikhlas the value of surah al ikhlas to understand it knowing that he is al ahad he is the one that has everything and needs no one he is the one that we know him with the huwa we know him with al ahad allah we know him with as samad he is the one that we depend on and know that dependency leave that dependency act up with that dependence unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not unto anybody else none can give none can prevent allah is the only one that has it if you have that trust then you have that amana you have that tranquility and that comfort from him then you know he is al ghani the one that we ask everything that we need that our nafs would be comfortable and tranquil in that may allah help us to act upon it may allah grant us jannah may allah make us amongst those who will see laylatul qadr and be accepted from us wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin amin amin imam thank you very much for the dart mashallah it's very profound and uh... in learning the reality of uh, the surah to ikhlas mashallah mm-hmm. it's not what we think and it's the shortest mm-hmm. surah that we love to read yes. and yet it has a uh, lots of depths in it that we don't even uh, recognize it or even understand it mashallah thank you for yes. sharing imam may allah, allah preserve you uh, amen amen we have a question only but alhamdulillah is a interesting question you know, uh, nevertheless uh, one question Uh, maybe uh, this person is from Tarikat Tijani, and he said, "I want to ask Imam why, in our path, uh, we read uh, three times uh, for leaving Surah Al-Ikhlas and eleven times Surah Al-Ikhlas for the one who had passed on." Mm-hmm. That would be answered secret? later on, Inshallah. Yes, okay. So it can be answered. It can be answered <laughs> on Bangla Gate. And okay. we know we read the Surah Al-Ikhlas three times would mean leave the Surah Al-Ikhlas. For for the for the living ones, you're reading for them the whole entire Quran. You're reading Inshallah. for them the whole entire Quran. Yes. Inshallah. Mm-hmm. So, Imam, uh, my Sheikh, another question. My Sheikh has asked me to read Surah Ikhlas when I feel I'm being disturbed disturbed by jinn or having mm-hmm. spiritual disturbance. How does Surah to Ikhlas help in this case? Yes. Not only that, let's try on when we read in a surah, when we try to read anything in the Quran, to ponder upon it, because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala told us in the Quran, "Afala yatadabbaroon al Quran, amala qulubin akhfaluha." Don't they ponder upon the Quran, or have their seal in their hearts, or have their hearts been sealed? So if our hearts are not sealed and we're pondering upon the Quran, we read Surah Al Ikhlas, and number one, we said you read Surah Al Ikhlas, it's a protection. as it is mentioned in one of its names is a protection for you the whole quran is a protection for you you read the surah al-ikhlas three times it comes to protect you now we go back into reading <laughs> understanding what we reading we've said that when you read quran surah al-ikhlas you have no dependence onto anything you know that nothing can do nothing can prevent but allah allah is everything your concept your mind knows that he is the one that you depend on and he will never betray you when you entrusted him something he will give it to you he has everything that you want you want him to chase the jinn away he will chase the jinn away you want him to protect you from the jinn he will protect you from the jinn everything that you want from him <laughs> ask him and he will give it to you that's what we're told these are the two things that will keep you now living into this jannah of this dunya so that keeps you saved from the shaitan or the jinns of the waswasa that comes into your mind of reading the quran would protect you from that and understanding the quran <laughs> would keep your mind more tranquil so one is you get the, the protection from the quran the second one is you get the tranquility from the comfort of your mind and again allah said ala bi dhikri la yatmani qulub with the remembrance of allah the hearts would find tranquility and that there is no better dhikr than al quran al karim thank you imam inshallah mm-hmm. beautiful uh, the next question is about khatam quran Someone mm. said that how is it that we, we cut down Quran? If we uh, there was a saying narration that if you read Surah Al-Ikhlas three times, 
is like uh, Katam Quran they was saying about the Sayyidina Ali said that yes. yeah and he said that uh, isn't it Yasin is the heart of the Quran so how mm. what about the status of Surah Ikhlas that to the point that when you read three times that you have Katam the Quran the wisdom Allahu A'lam well, like Allahu A'lam, these, if you look at the Quran, if you look at the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu what he said about so many things. Look at what he said about Ayatul Kursi. What he said about Ayatul Kursi as being the greatest ayah in the Quran. So why don't I just read Ayatul Kursi and leave Surah Yasin? <coughs> We've gone through the tafsir of Surah Yasin. And he said, Yasin lima quri ala, for everything that you read it for. Everything in the Quran has its own value. Everything has its own value. We don't ask Allah why this and why is that. We are the believer that we say, Sami'ana wa atana. We believe and we obey. But we are not blindly to believe and obey. Allah gave you the opportunity of Surah Al Ikhlas. Okay? And He tells you the Surah Al Ikhlas, reading it three times is equal to the entirety of the Quran. But He told you in the Surah Al Ikhlas why it is the three times equals to it. Because Allah has the three, three qualities or three stations at that. A sifat and an af'al. Those are the three. And Qul Wala Ahad only talks about the Zatullah. When you read the Qul Wala Ahad, you're talking about only the Zatullah. But when you come to the to Surah Al Yasin, it talks about Af'alullah, the things that he does. Remember Surah Al Ikhla, Surah Al Yasin talks about what we did to the people before, <laughs> what he, how he destroyed the people before. When the people came in uh, to, to, to tell the people of, 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 of uh, Turkey, when the Isa sent the people to them, and he told them how he created the heaven and the earth. He talks about how he creates the, 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 the mountain. He talks about how he brings everything in this planet, the creation. So he talks about Af'alullah. Then he talks about the Jannah, and he describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yaseen as the description, well, Quran al-Hakim. Talks about the Quran, the value of the Quran. So each and every surah in the Quran has its own value. Every single one of them has its own word, and Allah knows best. If you want to just read the three, let's take a, let's take a look at it this way. One doesn't know Surah Yasin because it's longer and it's more difficult. One knows Surah Al-Ikhlas. Most people know Surah Al-Ikhlas. So Allah gave you the opportunity to read the whole entire Quran three times to, give, to, get, the blessing of Surah Al to get the blessings of reading the entire Quran. But Yasin has its own value as well. Everything that you desire, you read it for, Yasin will give it to you. But it never said Yasin reading it this many, this three times would make the equal the amount of Quran. But in Ikhlas is equal to the Quran. But this gives you what you want. Reading Yasin for the dead, every <laughs> single one of them has its own value. Let us not compare each one of them, only Allah knows best. Yeah. Inshallah, Imam. Beautiful. Um, the next question. Uh, Salam Imam, since Allah is free from every need, how does the slave fulfill slavehood and khalifahood from knowing Surah to Ikhlas? The, real, the reality of Surah to Ikhlas. Yeah. Say, say the question again. Said, uh, since Allah is free from every need, how does mm -hmm. the slave uh, <coughs> fulfill its slavehood and khalifa, that means being in this world? Uh, mm -hmm. from knowing Surah to Ikhlas. That means like uh, knowing what is the reality of Surah to, to experience it, the Surah to Ikhlas. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have to, to experience Surah to Ikhlas is to understand Surah to Ikhlas and live it in your life. <clears throat> let's say, let's take a look at the last part of it when Shaykh Ibrahim was talking about when you understand Surah to Ikhlas, you're living in the Jannah of the dunya. Number one, you, you're coming into the, the, the Zatullah, knowing who Allah is exactly. That's what Surah Al-Ikhlas is coming to tell you. Surah Al-Ikhlas doesn't talk to you about Af'alullah, what Allah does. It doesn't talk to you about <laughs> Sifatullah, the quality of Allah. But he tells you who Allah is. So you come to understand him that he is the only one and he is the one that we depend on. The one that needs no one and we all need him. So you know he is the perfect one and he needs nobody because he describes in the beginning who Allah Ahad as who needs no one and everybody needs him. So you as a slave to declare your slavehood, to declare your Khalifa, mm -hmm. if I was to tell you, you are my Khalifa, which you're my vice gerent in Singapore, and I'm here in America, when you need something, you would send me a text message and say, Imam, I need this and that. 
email it to me or send it to me by DHL or by fax or whatnot, and I will send it to you. So that me making you your vi my vice dear and my Khalifa makes you feel like I am the one that you can depend on on everything that you need, you would ask me. So the question, if I understand it properly, how that one can accept the concept of being the vicegerent of Allah or the Khalifa of Allah with the Khulwa Lau Ahad is you are the vicegerent and you know that he is the summit. You are the Khalifa and you know he is the one that you depend on. When you need something, you reach out to him so he gives it to you. And that's what Allah <coughs> summit is coming to tell you. Mm -hmm. And Allah knows best. Inshallah, Imam, profound. Just now you were mentioning uh, this few questions I tried to rephrase. It's coming in. Uh, just now you're mentioning about how the akal and the bad desire and how the akal be, uh, having that bit bad desire. So uh, through the surah, surah to a class, you mentioned mm. the verses. So the question is, how do we uh, deal with intellect or brain or mind that has already polluted with bad desire. How do we counter it? Mm -hmm. Well, I remember when we, I, I think we did the talk about the anwar nafs, the different types of, of, yeah. of self. Yep. You know, the nafsul amaratun bisu. So, Sheikh uh, Ibrahim told us in his book, he said, there are three, when the, the murid is in the, in the tariq salik, is on his path towards knowing Allah, he is met by a nafsul amaratun bisu. So you're always being told, man, you know what? Go to the club, go drinking, hang out with this. That girl telling you the things that your, your nafs desire, your body desire, your animalistic self desires, which is eat, drink, and procreate. So that's what your, your human flesh and body, animalistic quality loves to do. <laughs> but your aql, which is the ruh, the spirit, wants to be elevated. Now, if you are dominated, by this uh, mind, that, by this nafsul amaratun bisu, you will be lost. You will be just like an animal. Now, one gets known to have yourself, you have to have a control of self, terbiyah, by going to someone who is pious, frequenting people that are pious, people that go towards the other direction that you're going, rather than going clubbing or hanging out with the girls. You go to the masjid, you go read the Quran, you go read the ahadith, you go do things that are bring that brings you closer to Allah to a point now you start getting the point of regret. Oh. The point of regretting of what you have done wrong. Now, once you start getting to the level of nafsul lawama, you're being blamed and say, remember, you get up to go do go clubbing, and the oh. mind that was bl blaming you comes here and say, you know what? Go to the Zawiya. People are gathering there to read. You're better off there than going to the club. Last time you went to the club, you were so drunk that you couldn't even get home. You, were, you slept on the street. So this nafs is teaching you to go back that direction. It mm -hmm. only gets that direction. You only get to get there by getting to know what is there. You never know what is there until you go there. I've known of Singapore. I've known of this, the, the humid and rainy weather. You don't know about this, this cold and snowy Michigan because you've never been here. And I've been there. So that is the difference that makes me know what Singapore has to offer, what Michigan has to offer. The same mm -hmm. thing with the one whose mind is polluted with bad desire, need to know what is the mind that is full with good desire <laughs> by going to those who have that, by going to do things that are of good desires, frequenting the masajid, reading the Quran, doing the azkar, making salawat ala nabi, so his brain will start tasting it. Like the woman that told the man, when he read in the Salat Atanha and Il Fahshai Wal Mulka, mm -hmm. Salat prohibits one from doing wrong. The person never made Salat. So he's seen the wife of the Imam, so beautiful as a woman. He wanted her. He's a womanizer. He came and offered the woman money to sleep with her. The woman told him, Do you know who I am? I am the wife of the Imam. He said, So what? I want you and I have the money. The woman answered to him very well and said, I would order you or ask you, only thing that I want from you, not money, but for you to make salat behind my husband. He's the imam of the masjid. Make salat for 40 days and 40 nights. And after that, when you come, I'll give you what you want. So he went to make salat 40 days and 40 nights. 10 days within it, the woman met him again and asked him, what about what you were thinking about? He said, I found something that is better than you. And that was the salat. When you make salat sincerely, 
it will prohibit you or prevent you from doing fahsha and munkar. So that's what I would advise the person is to frequent doing good deeds so he can taste what good deed tastes like for him to like good deeds and be able to alter his mind. Wallahu a'lam. Thank you, Imam. Uh, the last question I have with me right now is that uh, someone was asking in general terms, uh, Imam, about the, how many times should we read Surah Ikhlas in a day? If we don't have a teacher, let's say you don't have a shape. So what is the minimum problem. that you should read? Three. Minimum three. is three. Maximum is limitless. Minimum okay. is three, maximum is limitless. Why? Because Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in, in the in the in the dust that we just read that uh, the man was re read the Quran. If you read it three times, it equals to reading the entire Quran. If you read the Quran, the Ikhlas three times, it equals to the entire Quran. And this other man that died, and all of the angels came on his funeral. Why? Because he used to read Surah Al Ikhlas a lot. Okay. He didn't tell us how many. So we understand from that, reading it a lot, don't put a number on it, just read as many times as you can, that would grant you that. Wallahu Asha Allah. Asha Allah, so Imam. minimum three, maximum <laughs> unlimited. Mashallah. Thank you, Imam. I think it's been an uh, amazing night. We learned so much depth on Surah to class despite, despite that it is a short, the shortest Surah and the favorite surah of, for all of us. But Allah, you said, yeah, Allah. you know, wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. thank you, Imam, once again uh, for being online with us tonight. And uh, all this while also, mashallah, Allah bless you. Uh, before Amen. we end, Amen. before we end, Imam, uh, we need your dua for closing dua. Mm. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين وحدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا رب بذاتي وصفاتي كلنا في سائر الحالات تبر قلوبنا على الإيمان وتهدنا لعمل الإحسان انظر إلينا وانصر المدينة أدي حقوقنا وأدي دينا وهب لنا ذرية مباركة تكون لله بلا مشاركة وجزي كل من إلينا أحسنا وجازي عنا جزاء الأحسنا بالمصطفى شفى يوم المعشر خير ورا من قد حبيب الكوثري عليه صلى الله ربنا وسلم نفاد بخيرنا وعمنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعفو عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعفو عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعفو عنا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر حق بالعق والهدي إلى صلاتك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقدار العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Zakumalak. 9.15, we have some interesting discussion on Ramadan Reflection 2020, where is Allah in our life? So stay tuned to that. And on this Friday, we also have Sheikh Afifuddin Adilani. Uh, do keep uh, look out for it for more details. With this, we say thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you again, inshallah.